My only hope is you. From early in the morning to late at night, my only hope is you. My only peace is you, Jesus. My only peace is you. From early in the morning to late at night, my only peace is you. My only joy is you, Jesus. My only joy is you. From early in the morning to late at night, my only joy. I just discovered this song yesterday thanks to my sister princess and um uh, yeah it's just been on play 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 and really oh my goodness my only hope is jesus right and um uh, i don't know about you i really pray that that becomes your case to your portion because every other thing fades and every other thing gives let's down at some point disappoint and all of that so you know uh, the heart of man is this really wicked too so that to put my hope in a man <clears throat> woman child relationship with any human being say love them but don't trust them oh, wow i learned that one to yesterday so my only hope my only peace my only joy is jesus because he alone can change my story. He can turn what the enemy meant for evil. Because that is what also happened to him. Okay, my special love and healing ministry tribe. I hope everyone is doing well. So, um, Father God, I thank you so much for this morning. Oh my goodness, in the mighty name of Jesus, I just want to offer it all up to you. Thank you for life, for health, for providence. I thank you for peace, for joy, oh my God, for so much hope, for loving me so, Father, I thank you, and for giving me um, opportunities and chances to just love on you and love on on, on, on my neighbor, you know, and, and love on my own self, Father, I just thank you for everything. I commend this uh, morning devotion into your hands, Holy Spirit, take over, breathe on my mouth, guide me. I just want to make you Jesus proud. Thank you for everything. Have your way. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray this morning. Amen. Our morning devotion is taken from Psalm 76 verse 10. Oh my goodness. Wrath to God's glory. From human wrath to God's glory. 
what the enemy meant for evil. God has turned it around, turned it around. What the enemy meant for evil. God has turned it around for my good. Put your name there, okay? God does that. Surely the wrath of man will praise thee. The remainder of wrath shall thou restrain. Man in his wrath thinks that he has arrived. And so becomes very boisterous. And oh, now God, now God, now God. But God knows how to humble such people. And he knows how to turn what the meant for evil in your life to good. He did that in the life of Jesus, right? What the enemy meant, he turns it around. Wicked people will be wrathful. We must endure their anger as the batch of our calling and the indication of our separation from them. Carry your cross. What can we do? I have decided. I put my hand on the plow. So, if it was not easy for Jesus, why should it be easy for me? Yes. No, Jesus did not say that. I'm not going to believe anything that Jesus did not say. Jesus did not say, oh, you will not must suffer, no trials, no persecution. Uh, no, just follow me. Wide is the road that leads to heaven. No, he didn't say any of those things. So no, I don't mind. Let them be wicked. Let them persecute me. Let them backbite me. Let them gossip. Let them slander. Let them say all kinds of things. I'm enduring. That's a batch of my calling and the indication of my separation from them. I am not conform to the world, you know. If we were of the world, the world would love its own. John chapter 15 verse 19. That's true. Look, when I was in the world, my goodness, the invitations, the, the outings, the money, the this, the that, you know. Now, and I'm cool, you know. I, I have so much to do. For the kingdom and and for my own self my peace my sanity all of that so i don't even want all of that though. so i'm just cool you know i wonder why people even spend their time to talk to gossip and all of that and what value does that add to their lives i don't know maybe it, it makes them happy I, I don't know our comfort is that the wrath of man will be made to contribute to the glory of god when the wicked crucified the Son of God in their wrath, they were unknowingly fulfilling the divine purpose. And in a thousand cases, the willfulness of the ungodly is doing the same for you, for me. You know, oh God. God knows it all. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 says it and it's so clear. He knows the plans he has for me. So, and not plans to make me perish no plans to prosper me plans to bring me to an expected end full of hope and everything so which wicked can do what that can you know i was just i, I mean i was just thinking in my mind how i have to always pray you know because i've seen some people you know who were really once so strong in the faith and who were like talking to me about jesus now they don't even talk about jesus they don't you know just just anyhow do all kinds of things. and i'm like father i beg you let me not come this far and be a castaway there's nothing in the world maybe they never saw the world before you know so they're seeing the world now and they're like yeah i'm free let me enjoy myself but me i'm from there there's no enjoyment there so i don't want to go back there and so i have to pray because there's always luring, there's always temptation, you know, from the world, from that bastard and all of those kind of things. So you really have to pray, watch and pray and not faint. They think of themselves as free. Uh -huh. But like convicts in chains, they are unconsciously working out the decrees of the Almighty. <laughs> oh... The devices of the wicked are overruled for their defeat. 
they act in a suicidal way and toward their own plans yeah that's what happened to me i was on a roller coaster to i mean i got to a point where i myself picked up a knife i was fed up with my own life you know yeah but people could be looking at me and say ah oh, she's living a good life she has two cars blah, 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 blah. and just say what kind of thing to whoever bashing and bashing off and all of those things now nah. thank you father nothing will come of their wrath they can do us any real harm when they burn the matthias they smoke that blue from the stake seeking the adherence of roman catholicism more than anything else aha uh, uh, let's not forget the inquisition though let's not forget the crusades so crusades in those days back in those hundreds of years 100 years of crusade it was not to gather people and talk to them about jesus it was to burn to fish out any person who was talking about jesus in a way that was different from the way they wanted to talk about jesus let's not forget that but what has happened today can they do that anymore no meanwhile the lord has a muzzle and a chain for bears he restrains the more furious wrath of the enemy He's like a worker in a grain mill who holds back the mass of the water in the stream. And what he does allow to flow, he uses to stern his will. You don't even know that you are working before God. Oh? You think that you are working against God, against God's chosen. You don't even know. Because the day like Saul, he will strike you. You want to start talking about God, eh? yeah, nobody will tell you. You want to start living a different life, nobody will tell you. So, uh, the earlier you make that decision, even the earlier you yourself surrender to Him before life teaches you that kind of lesson that He taught me or that He teaches some people, the better for you. You don't need to be 44 to come to Christ, frankly speaking. The earlier you are, the better for you. There's, what is even there in the world? Sometimes people are... The, 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 the young generation, including my own sons, they're so into TikTok, Instagram, all of those things. Not, not looking at things about Jesus. No. Uh, recent trends, music, the kind of music they like, all of those things. I'm like, I'm not going to kill myself for you people, Lord. You have a Bible. If you care, you open it. You care, you don't open it. I'm living my life. I'm, I'm serving my God. And I'm moving on. I'm pressing on. I have assignments now. I carry out those assignments. And when I'm here, I model it to you people. But I can't. I can't force you people anymore. You've passed that age. I can only model it to you. How many other young people in the world are so lost? And sometimes parents, well, we are also so busy, the rat race and all of those things because we need all the money, 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 money. And in that process, we are prepared to smash, curse anyone who tries to come to us with this message of peace, hope, joy. What is that? Leave me alone. Can I buy me a bag of rice? Can I pay my, my bills? Can I, what can I do to me? You know, and stuff like that. And sometimes it's up to, they will not tell you like that to your face, that carry their message and go away, but they will just reject all you outrightly, you know, you know, stop talking to you or just say the basics, you know, good morning, good evening. And yeah, weird. Yeah, you're, you're living a weird life. You're carrying that Jesus thing too far and all of those kind of things. That is still their right, you know, they just don't know how else to do it, take you out. So. They just show it to you in all kinds of ways, both subtle and, you know, implied, express ways, everything that, no, 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 you like that. You are something else. Actually speaking, you have even lost your mind, you know, so, but that's what the Lord would use to reveal himself more and more in your life. And even in their own lives, there will come a day when they will be so chastised, so tormented by their uh, way of life that they are going to now say hey uh hey uh i surrender papa i'm so sorry you know and stuff like that and uh, if it never happens well 
not everyone will come to that level of consciousness you know and stuff like that and it's just so sad so uh let us not sigh but sing let us not sigh but sing as children as servants of god let us not sigh but sing you know my only hope is in you jesus my only hope is you from early in the morning to late at night my only hope is you wow it's not even in him but it's him yes my only hope is jesus not in jesus if my hope is jesus my peace is jesus my love is just my i was listening to billy graham before i came on live and he was talking about one famous american actor who has a lot of money at the time and everything and how the actor was saying that after all the acting and after he uh, the day is over he gets home removes all of those marks and everything drops them there at the door and just drops on his knees he's so lonely he, he just has to cry himself to sleep or, you know, just take something. He wishes there was a hand he could hold that truly loved him. He doesn't know Jesus, right? And um, there's no human hand that can fill up some kind of void in somebody. I've tried now. No. But now I don't have no void in me. Like, I'm even like, ah, Papa, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm good with you, Jesus, you know. Uh, I mean, Jeremiah was good with you. <laughs> he never got married, never had children. Me, I even got married once and I had children. That's enough now, Papa. Me, I'm good with you. I just want me and you so that I can just freely save you and do everything. And, you know, God has his own plans. But as far as me, I'm concerned because the desires of my heart are also that. That let me just leave whatever number of years I have left just like that alone. I'm not. It, it, it can be a lonely journey serving God. But because we have Jesus, he is our hope and he is our comfort. He's our everything. So we don't cry like people from the world cry. And we don't need to go and take any drug and any wine and look for sex and all of those things to fill it up. No, no, no. I talk about it, yet I take comfort in knowing that I'm not alone, really. And so I shouldn't feel lonely. I should just... Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. So all is well, no matter how hard the wind blows. I was telling my, no matter how long the night lasts, joy will come in the morning. That was even our morning devotion of yesterday. And so when it will come, what is there again? There is hope. My association is called hope for the abused and the battered. People will abuse you. People would bash you. I was once abused and battered. But this is me today, right? So, no. It cannot last forever. You know? And, and, and it would only kill you if you stay in it and you don't run to Jesus. Sometimes you need to leave. Take yourself out of that situation. You know? And run to Jesus. Because sometimes only just pray, 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 pray that it will pass away. And staying in that situation... It's not going to save you. It's not going to help you. You need to take yourself out of it. And he would give you the grace. The morning prayer was reading from um, you version. You know, this, um, I love it a lot. Um, the Bible. I don't know if you have it, but I really love it just so much, frankly speaking. So it was talking about make space for what matters most if it matters to you you are going to do this beloved if god so loved us we also ought to love one another and uh, how can we how can you love someone today and then uh yeah so people had to love but we have to because scripture encourages us because god loved us so much that's the least we can do and uh, christians should be christians should be the most loving people on the planet after all we have been given the ultimate gift from god we have not only received salvation and eternal life but we received the gift of god himself 
He even gave us his spirit. This is what I was looking for. He even gave us his spirit to empower us for every good deed. So we have that spirit in us. So no, these people who are coming against us, being cared and everything, you, you, you pray. I said, Father, help me. Like somebody was so mean to me in a group. So it's not like they talk, talk to me alone. And they use some kind of language and everything. And I prayed. You know, I even prayed before I wrote. And I prayed after they wrote what they wrote. And my response was, I forgive you. I'm not going to stoop so low as to use such language on you. And I had my peace when I wrote that. Actually, that was what I was dictated to write. I forgive you. I'm not going to stoop so low to use such language. Ten years ago, that's not Maria Banga. In short, we went to high school together. That's not me. My name in high school was Madiko. My nickname, one of them. That's no, 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 no. I was suspended for eight days for talking to the vice principal anyhow and threatening her cat. So I was a redhead, like kick head. So for me to tell somebody, write to them publicly, I forgive you. And I'm not going to stoop so low as to use such language. It just says it all. And I just love this new person that I am. So they will come. But we are stronger than that. Because Jesus has already overcome the world. So what in the world can get to us? Having received this amazing love and mercy from God, we ought to love others in the same way. When we love others in the same manner that God has loved us, we exhibit the greatest evidence that we are children of God. By this, all we know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. If we fail to love those around us, we also fail to show them the love of God. We should not deny others what we've been given freely. Loving others doesn't mean we need to willingly be mistreated, as I just said in my example or agree with someone else's lifestyle or worldview. Yeah, you can love someone from a distance, so you can pray for someone that's love. When you have an opportunity to give someone a second chance, do so in love. Or when you have the chance to help someone in need, do so cheerfully. Yeah. That's how I self. I know I'm like, well, I have a God who is powerful. I have a God who is mighty and he's such a good God. And so uh, when I am slighted, persecuted, all of those things, I, I, I take it all to him and I pray to him and um, frankly speaking, I also pray, ask for mercy for myself because I could have also been mean to some other person. You know, even had some thoughts in my head and all of those kind of things. So it's very important to have a personal relationship with Jesus so that he's really going to remind you in, the, in his word, right? In the scriptures and fill you up with that kind of a peace and serenity, you know, to, to go through all of those things every day and not feel terrible about those people and try to be justifying yourself each time and fire for fire and all of this is no you are more than that we are more than conquerors right through christ so yeah father i thank you so much for your word this morning i give you all the glory we are what just so much we actually the ones to be bragging shining we are the light of the world we are the salt of the earth so i am and that's my team for this year but i'm shining on for god not for me myself so I'm not going to shine on the way the world thinks that you should shine. No, I'm not going to rub anything on my body or wear fancy clothes or do all of those things. No, that's not how I shine for God. I shine for God by completely submitting myself to him and doing what, doing his bidding and talking about him, you know, unapologetically. That's how I shine for God. Because the harvest is plenty for the laborers are few. Few people want to do this. Ah, nah, nah. They want to belong, they want the fame, they want the fortune, and sometimes it clashes, right? So, no, wait, wait, God, just stay there. Me and you, I just pray in my room. I go out and I leave, I come back in the night and I will pray. That's enough. You know, they will say it's a matter of the heart. So, no, it's in my sacred place. You don't need to know that I'm a Christian and all of that. Well, I've made a different choice and I don't mind the persecution and all of those things. Amen. 
So be encouraged, right? And um, don't hesitate. Jesus doesn't need you to be clean to come to him. He cleanses. So if you're even clean before you come to what is he going to wash? If you're well, you don't go to the hospital, you know, and, and all of that. So no, don't wait. Don't hesitate. Don't, um, you know, the, 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 the scripture for this whole ministry is Matthew 11, verse 28 to 30. Come unto me, all you are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So come. I came. I wasn't like this. So he changes stories, renews minds, lives are transformed. But you have to first come. And I'm not going to give any formula. Just come. Talk to him wherever you are, in your shower, in your room, or anywhere. Just say, Father, I'm so sorry. I'm coming here. Yeah, yeah, Papa, have mercy on me. You know, I surrender it all. That, those are the kind of things I said when I came to Jesus. You know, and so please just do it. Don't be wasting time. The world is something else. And yeah, there are more and more vile people around and everything. But you will overcome just like our Lord and Savior overcame too. Amen. Father, I thank you so much for this morning. I lift it all up to you. And I decree and declare that whatever little fever is coming upon me will be gone by midday, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. I have no appointment with any sickness and all of that, Father God. No appointment with any evil forces and all of that. Nothing to do on any altar, Father God. So I want to really just say, Holy Spirit, take over and turn it around for my good in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for this morning devotion. Bless us all. I lift it all up into your hands. Take all the glory, Papa. It's all about you. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, tribe, do have a full of testimony Tuesday. And um, yeah, join my sister princess at 3.30 p.m. Cameroon time or whenever she's kind of free to do it. For a chapter a day. Today's Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm studying the Bible chapter by chapter. And uh, because she started when I I, I wasn't aware. I mean, we're not yet connected. So I'm catching up on the other chapters. Um, and when I do my devotions in the morning, I study all the two chapters from Samuel. I'm now in Second Samuel. And then I also study the chapter she's going to be talking about so that if I'm opportune to join her life, I can share already my thoughts, right? Um, that's such a beautiful way to study your, your Bible, study the Word of God. And then during the day, I just read. I'm actually in a Bible Institute, and I'm also in the Billy Graham School of Evangelism online. So I'm saturating myself. You have to do that. So there's no weapon that can be fashioned against me that will prosper because I am blind. I'm I'm like that, you know, like na 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 na. Okay, and then uh, my bishop, oh my God, Bishop Barry Lesebena Lova, founder of Church Without Words Evangelistic Association, she'll be having a conference on the first of September. I wish I could fly. It's called unraveling. What a word, unraveling! My goodness, go to our page, go to Church Without Words Evangelistic Association page, and learn more about that conference and. She says that there are 50 slots and 38 have already been taken. So if you're in Ghana, you know, just don't, oh my goodness, don't take some things for granted. There are some things are once in a lifetime opportunities. And then um, there are other nuggets and she says that there's going to be some good recording of the, uh, you know, the teachings, right? I cannot wait for those recordings. And then you can connect with us on any of our platforms, you know, the phone number, for what's up and all of that well we are a young ministry we are growing and we are carrying out um, an evangelism outreach in a village with the little children and if you want to support us you know people support us in whatever way they can and we are just so grateful our next outreach is on the 2nd of september so i'll be leaving on the either on the 31st or on the of august or on the 1st of september right and so well I sometimes say if you want to come with me, but <laughs> it's not an easy road. People come once and they don't want to come back a second time. Not even many people, one person, but I'm grateful, you know, each time. Um, so yeah, that is it for this morning. God bless us. Uh, 
my only hope is in you jesus my only hope is in you